the Board Bia Quality Mark, ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards of traceability and care for the environment. I'm here at the GPO, one of the most iconic buildings in the capital. It was built in 1814 and it's the oldest functional general post office in the world, as well as being the busiest post office in the country, serving 30,000 customers every week. More than 900 people work here, some at the counters behind me, but many more behind the scenes, working in customer call centre, state savings, marketing and stamp design, to name but a few. And in addition to that, work is underway on the 2016 Exhibition Centre. GPO Witness History is going to be Dublin's next major visitor attraction, scheduled to open at Easter 2016. So how do you keep hundreds of on-post employees fed and watered? On the top floor of this massive building is a large staff canteen, and it's one of the busiest in the city centre. Derek, thank you very much for having me into your kitchen. It's a very busy operation you have here. How many people would you cook a day for? Um, between five and 600 people a day. That covers breakfast and lunch. Well, I'm shocked about doing those numbers in this size of a kitchen. That's pretty impressive. So what are you going to cook for me today? Well, today we have Vienna steaks. It's yes. one, of, one of the choices that's on mm -hmm. the menu today. Yeah. It's minced beef. Yes. Good Irish minced beef. Good Irish minced beef. Yeah. So with this be dish, I'll have you here. Move that out of the way. To that we add our diced onion. Now this would be small quantities you'd be making here, quantity. just for me. Yes, I, I've, I've made a larger quantity. And how many's in a large quantity? Um, I made 180 portions earlier. Bread crumbs, mm -hmm. a bit of puree of garlic. Oh, okay. So garlic in there. Garlic. Yeah. All right. Tomato puree. Yeah. Just a small amount of tomato puree. Lovely. That's perfect. Now. We have it. Egg, pasteurised Just eggs. to bind it, is it? Yeah, okay. just to bind okay. it together. Put the egg in. Lovely, and move that over. Then the cracked black pepper. Nice bit of a kick to it. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens next now when this is next, all done? Next, we bind it together. Yes. We just put it on the This is some monster machine. Yeah. <laughs> because um, normally this, the bowl would be full to the brim, really full up. Okay, so you close it off. Switch to, it on? You'll have to. Oh you yeah, put it up, up okay. You need muscles on your ear? Yeah. Switch it on? That's it, It's yeah. a three? Yeah. There we go. So you're just combining everything that's together it. to bind just it? Just bind okay. the whole lot together. Yeah, well that's, that's, that's blended enough now. Just the table. Yeah. So that's the texture there you're looking for. That's you it. can see the yeah. onion, nice bit yeah. of texture. You can shape it into like a, a Swiss roll. So that's what a Vienna steak is, the size and the shape. It can be used. Yeah. This recipe just changed ingredients a little and you can do homemade burgers. Yes. Okay. We do risoles. Yeah. Like patties. Yeah. So we just go yeah. along. We portion them out. You cut it like that. And where do you get your beef from? All our beef is quality assured. This one is from County Limerick. And how often now do you change the menu here? Well, it's it's on a four-week cycle. Yeah. It goes from week one to four. We change it then every six months then yeah. to a different four-week okay. cycle. Okay. And like, what time were you in here this morning at? I start at half five. I start off doing all the fresh pastries mm -hmm. and the scones and things like that. There's one of your Vienna so steaks now shaped. Roughly about the size of the pan. That looks gorgeous. What's the most popular thing on the menu here? Curry. Curry? <laughs> Thursday is curry day. They, they go mad if curry's not yeah. on on a Thursday. And what about Friday? And all fish. these fish on Friday are lasagna. Marks out of ten, what would you give them? Oh, ten and a half. <laughs> I yeah, love it, this. thank you. <laughs> well, by shaping these, I'll turn on the brat pan and have it nice and hot. They're great, aren't they, the brat pans, for cooking in volume in particular. So on the menu today, you have the Vienna steak. What else? I have the ham and mushroom vegetable pie, topped with mashed potato, and poached smoked cod in lemon and dill sauce. Now, how many would you have in the kitchen here helping you? One commie chef and 
two catering assistants. They do the prep for the salads and okay. the sandwich bar. Yes. And one kitchen porter. That's, That's a tight operation. Yeah. There's ten full-time staff and two part-time staff. That's very impressive. So you've got this, the pie and the fish. Which do you think today will be the most popular? Oh, the Vienna steaks by far, yeah. <laughs> the, they go mad for these. Do they? Very, very popular. Yeah. So your brat pan is on. Brat pan is on. Nice and hot. Ready to roll. We're going to seal these off. Seal them here in the brat pan. Okay. So have you some oil in there already? There's a drop of oil already. A little bit of oil, yeah. okay. I sealed them for about two minutes, two minutes either okay. side. Then we finish them off in the oven. I yeah. start turning them so these are well sealed now. Lovely. So after a few minutes you turn them over. Yeah. This is a dish that the viewers can make at home. It's a yes, lovely. It's, it's so easy to do. Yeah. They can make different ideas out of it. Yeah, and different they spices different they can spices add. Different spices they yeah. can add to their own thing. And at home you just simply pan fry them or grill them, wouldn't pan you? Pan fry them, yeah. that's it. Yeah. That's them sealed now on both sides. Lovely. We'll take them up on the tray now for the oven. And they're so simple to make. How many would you serve for a portion? We'll give two per portion. Yeah. We, we'll put them in the oven for 15 minutes. And the oven is at what temperature? At 170. Here's two I put in the oven earlier. Yeah, here's one we made earlier. That's one of my lines. One I made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> right. And what do you serve with this now? Serve oh, you have onions. We have onions, yeah. sauté onions. Yes. Cracked black pepper sauce. Yeah. Baby boiled potatoes. Carrot and parsnips today. Peas and sweet corn. Just some of them will have chips. fries. Some yeah. of them will have Lovely. salads. Lovely. Yeah. So is it okay to taste this now? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. serve it up here. Looks good. Some pepper sauce. Okay. Looking better. One of the great things about this job is tasting other chefs' food. I love it. Now you have some too. I love the flavour of it, the texture, and the sauce that works really well. Now that is delicious. To get two of them, you're well fed. Two here. of them. Thank you for having me into your kitchen. No problem. Thank I wish you for continued much. success. Thanks, Derek. So that's it for now for the GPO. It's back to Black Lion, but I will be back in the GPO cooking some lovely recipes later on in the programme. There's something very comforting about soup, and this one is quite sophisticated. It's an asparagus and blue cheese soup. We're going to start, first of all, preparing the asparagus. Have a saucepan of water on and a pinch of salt. So I'm using asparagus, but you can use sprout and broccoli. You can also use courgettes in this soup, and you can use leeks. In France, the leeks is known as the poor man's asparagus. So with the full asparagus like this, you remove the very, very ends. Just about four of these should be enough to garnish. Pop them in, put the lid on, and give them a minute. So into my pot, put in some oil, chop the asparagus nice and thin, and you're using the stalks and you're using the tips. I love this, banana shallot, it's lovely and sweet, and a potato. So there's no flour in the soup, which is lovely and light. So the banana shallot, it's already peeled and just dice this nice and fine. But before I do that, I just wanna take out the asparagus. This is what you call to blanch and refresh into some iced water. So I'll just leave them there for a moment. So back onto my banana shallots. In the restaurant, we use white asparagus when it's in season. You also get really, really fine asparagus all year round from Thailand. So a little bit of shallot and then your potato. So do all your dicing. This is the base for the soup. So if you were using broccoli or leeks, you do the exact same process as I've done with the asparagus. A little bit of butter into the pan. The oil stops the butter from burning. Just swirl it around and then bring your board over. Empty all your ingredients in here. The asparagus, you have the shallot and the potato. One thing I love about soups is that they freeze really well. When you defrost it, obviously in the fridge, you bring it back to the boil and you just simply hand blend it and it's perfect. So reduce the temperature. I'm going to leave that for five minutes to sweat off. Meanwhile, I can make the scones and brown scones, which are fantastic with soup. Lovely for an afternoon tea, really easy to make. Self-raisin flour and then we have some bread soda. So this is the raisin agent. Sieve this. And into that, we're putting some wholemeal flour and then we're putting in some bran. So there's great texture in these scones here. I'm going to put a pinch of salt, and this is just some fine sea salt. With the butter, I'm just going to rub this in just with my fingertips. So into this mixture, when I have the butter rubbed in, I'm going to put in some brown sugar and some golden syrup. They're slightly sweet, and they'll give a lovely caramelization on the scones. So my sugar goes in, and then we're just going to mix this through. So just using your fingers, so rub it in, make a well in here. I'm going to put a little bit of golden syrup, and then my buttermilk. 
Now I'm going to mix this all through just using a wooden spoon. And even though these are a little bit sweet, I think they work really well with the soup. But if you want to leave out the sugar, the golden syrup, the scones are absolutely fine without it. You may need to increase a little bit more buttermilk. So I don't want a very wet mixture. Now if I was making this for brown bread, what I would do is put more buttermilk and have it a lovely drop in consistency. A little bit of flour here, flour into the bowl, and then we're just going to mix this all together. A little bit of flour in your hands. So knead, just a little bit, no need to overwork it too much. And then a little bit more flour on top. You can put in different nuts, for example, walnuts work really well. So play around, have a little bit of fun. Parchment paper is fantastic for baking it, but what you can do is cut these out, which I'm gonna do now, put them onto a tray and put them into your freezer. And you can bake them straight from frozen. Roll it about an inch thick and using a scone cutter, cut them out and place them onto some parchment paper. If you want to get a really nice glaze on them, a little bit of egg yolk, a touch of milk mixed together, brushed over the top. So I'm just gonna make six scones and I'm gonna place them into the oven. Parchment paper, nothing will stick to this, it's fantastic. The oven is preheated at 220 and they'll take between 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna wash my hands. We're gonna go back to the soup. Now, okay. So let's have a little look at the soup. I love the smell of asparagus. I'm gonna put in some stock. I'm using some chicken stock, but if you have a vegetarian coming, you can use some vegetable stock. And then we're gonna add some cream. And this is just some whipping cream. Stir this through, put the lid on, bring it to the boil, gonna let it simmer. This will be ready in about eight to 10 minutes. And then the last thing I need to do is add in the blue cheese. Look at their beautiful and golden brown. Lift them off onto a cooling rack. Let them cool. We're gonna come back to our soup, switch it off, put in some black pepper. I'm not gonna put salt because we're gonna put the blue cheese in. I'm using some cashew blue cheese. Aren't we lucky now in Ireland to have such great cheese? I'm gonna put in two nice pieces here. People get nervous using blue cheese. I think it's fabulous in the soup. It's beautiful, so it is. It's um, salty, slightly sweet, and it works really well with the asparagus. Blend this. If you want it really, really green, you can put in two or three leaves of large spinach or a little bit of watercress, and it gives a beautiful, doesn't affect the flavor, but intensifies the color. Mm. No need for salt. It's delicious. With the asparagus, I took them out of the iced water, just onto some kitchen paper. If you want to, you can toss them a little bit of butter, but the soup should warm it through. So we're just gonna serve up a nice, generous, big bowl of soup. And then we have the asparagus. And they have a tendency, when you pop them in, they'll sink, so don't worry about that. And I can kind of build them up. And then a little drizzle of oil. This is just some olive oil I'm using. Touch of black pepper. And then just for a little bit of freshness, I'm gonna use a little bit of flat leaf parsley. A couple of little sprigs of this. Pick off the small little leaves, and then one little scone to the side. And there you have it. Really, really simple, but very, very tasty. That's my asparagus and blue cheese soup with brown scones. The board be a quality mark, ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards. The board be a quality mark, ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards. This is a great pudding that you can use store cupboard ingredients and I'm using some tinned apricots. You can have this from start to finish in the oven in five minutes. It's very, very simple. I've separated two eggs, so two egg yolks in here and two egg whites in the bowl. What I'm gonna put in, first of all, is just to whisk in some sugar, caster sugar, and then a little bit of vanilla extract, just a little splash. With the apricots, if you can get them always in their natural juice, they're not as sweet. And that's a lovely, lovely fruit to make this pudding. I'm gonna whisk this until it's light and fluffy. While that's on whisking, I can whisk my egg whites until they're lovely and soft. Always have the eggs at room temperature when you're whisking them. So when the egg whites are like a meringue, they're lovely and stiff, so they are. We're ready. What I'm gonna add in is my milk in here, and then my cream. Ground almond. This gives great texture. So this is actually the batter we're making. And I'm literally just gonna whisk this just for a couple of seconds until everything comes together. Now, get your egg whites. Just fold them in. So it's like a lovely light batter. Now at this stage, you can add different spices. Cinnamon works really well with this mixed spice or even a little bit of allspice. I have a large dish here, which I've buttered. I make sure it's oven proof. Just scrape out the mixture. There's no flour, it's the almonds that stabilizes it and gives it a lovely little bit of texture but holds it together. So just arrange the apricots just towards the edge. So you can use 
peaches, apricots, even cherries when they're in season. And what works really well with cherries is some Kirsch liqueur. Peaches, definitely peach snaps would work brilliant in this, about a tablespoon of peach snaps into the batter. But I'm using the tinned apricots, which are already stoned. There's no stone in them and there's no skin. So that's them there. We're gonna put that into the oven, which is preheated at 200, fan oven. And I'm gonna give that about 20 minutes. So while that's in the oven, I'm gonna show you a very quick custard creme anglaise. Heat our milk and cream. In goes the milk into the pot. The cream. So we're gonna scald this. In the bowl, I have five egg yolks. And I'm gonna put in vanilla pod. Scrape out the seeds. In goes the vanilla. We're gonna put in corn flour. So a large teaspoonful goes in there. Cast a sugar to sweeten it. Put a little splash of amaretto. Really, really nice as a digestive after dinner. It works really well with the almonds. I'm whisking and dispersing the vanilla seeds and just dissolving the sugar with the egg yolks. So the corn flour is important because it stops it from curdling. So it protects it, it thickens it also, which is important, but it doesn't give any flavor. The cream and milk has came to the boil. Pour this on, the hot onto the cold. We whisk this all together, and then we're gonna scrape this out. We need to cook this until it coats the back of the spoon. And obviously because we have corn flour in it, we need to cook out the corn flour. And just gently let that cook until you get a slow little simmer around the edge. And it speeds up the whole process when you boil the milk and the cream. So when you're making the custard, it's very important you pour the hot onto the cold. It stops the eggs from curdling. Traditionally in a creme anglaise, there would be no um, thickening agent in it. And if you curdle it, it's in the bin. You could even put whiskey into this, cool swan. So just experiment with different flavors. Another thing we do in the restaurant is always pass it through a sieve. So you get a lovely smooth, velvety texture on the custard. Look at that, you can see all the vanilla. And usually the proper way to test is just run your finger and then when it holds the back of the spoon, it's ready. Into a clean jug. And I think serving this warm with the pudding is delicious. The custard is made and the vanilla seeds have gone through the sieve, which is exactly what I want. Now I just have to wait for the pudding to be ready. So after 20 minutes, this is what the pudding looks like. It's lovely and golden brown. You can see the apricots, beautiful. Just whisk the custard, pour it into a little jug. And this is what I call a family serving. You just put this in the center of the table, let everyone help themselves. The custard on the side. I think that's a really great way of using thin fruit. It's quick and it's easy. That's my apricot pudding with amaretto custard. I'm back in the GPO and I'm gonna cook a speedy cockavan, which is a French dish. I'm in the GPO, so I'm gonna put an Irish twist onto it using good quality assured Irish chicken, smoked bacon, and there is a little bit of French wine. So first thing we need to do is to heat our pan. We're going to seal off some skinless and boneless chicken thighs, which are great value and delicious. I'm gonna use some rapeseed oil in the pan. Just simply seal these off. It's boneless and it's skinless. Cook it nice and flat. You can do this with chicken legs. Traditionally in France, they would use the full leg of the chicken, but the thighs are delicious, great value, very economical, and this is a lovely family dish, so it is. So I'm gonna put five chicken thighs onto the pan, season them up, so some sea salt, a little bit of black pepper. Now butter will give beautiful color and flavor to the chicken, keeping it really succulent and moist. So this is why this is a speedy cock of van. Traditionally, this would take two, two and a half hours in a low oven, you know, nice and slow, but it's all about fast food at home. So let's heat our pan and we can get the base for the cock of van. So our chicken is on cooking lovely. I don't want to turn it too soon. I want to get a little bit of color on the chicken. Of course, you can use it with the skin on. I prefer to use it with the skin off. Heat the pan for your sauce. A little bit of butter is going to go in here. So that begins to sizzle. This is a banana shallot, which is a large shallot, finely diced. Some garlic, crush the garlic, about three or four cloves of garlic, crushed, or you can chop them. Smoked bacon, absolutely essential in this dish. Some beautiful Irish smoked bacon. So this is what you call lardons, tiny little uh, cubes of diced bacon. Chop some of the thyme here. You can use tarragon, rosemary. I suppose I could take or leave in this. So get your herbs in there really early to get them cooking out, that's really important. So you have your garlic, your shallot, and shallots are a variety of onion, they're lovely and sweet and work really well in this. So we're looking for a little bit of color, not too much. This is really the non-Irish ingredient here, some nice red wine. It's what you call deglazing. Let that cook out for a moment. We're gonna put a tiny little bit of flour into that, which will help thicken it. And that's just some plain flour. 
Before I just stir through the flour, I'm gonna turn the chicken. I can hear it crackling and sizzling away, which is delicious, perfect. That's exactly what I want. Beautiful, golden brown, and it's gonna be so, so tasty. So we give this a stir. Really what we're making is a roux. You don't want to use flour, you can make it with corn flour. I'm going to add in some Worcester sauce into this. A good splash of this. The chicken ties with the Worcester and the red wine work really well together. Button mushrooms are going to go in now. And these are small little chestnut mushrooms, which I love. And they work really, really well. Just give them a little wipe. They can all go in here now. Little peeled shallots, which are peeled and cut in half, because they need to cook out and then just stir this through. So we're gonna bring that to the boil for a few minutes and keep everything whole. That's the beautiful thing about the mushrooms and all that. I'm gonna put in some stock. So this is a brown chicken stock from a cube is fine. You can use beef stock. So I'm just gonna pour half of this in for now and I'll see if I need any more. Stir this through and bring it back to the boil. What I'm gonna do is place the chicken into the cocker van. We're gonna put a lid on this and we're going to literally bring this to the boil. This is going to be done in about 15 minutes, I reckon, because the chicken is nicely sealed off. I'll switch the pan off there, but I will warm up some green beans. I'm just going to grab a lid, just stir everything through. You bring it to the boil, and then turn it to a simmer, and literally give that a good 15 minutes. And I'll come back to that, finish it with some parsley, and serve it with some lovely mashed potato. So after 15 minutes, the chicken should be cooked. We've already sealed it off in the pan and the smells are fantastic. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish it with a little bit of parsley. We're gonna serve some green beans, which I've already blanched off. So the green beans, just top and tail them, put them in boiling water for literally a minute into cold water and that's what you call blanch and refreshing. And I'm using the same pan that the chicken is in, so the flavor is lovely. Chop some parsley, don't chop it too fine. Okay, in goes the green beans. Lovely, nice little sizzle. A little bit of parsley in there. And into the cock of van. And then we just need to season both of them up. Some sea salt and a little bit of black pepper. Because remember, you've already seasoned up the chicken. Stir this through. And then just get a spoon, and all you're doing is warming up the green beans. So just flip them, like this, as easy as that. Just to toss them. See if the butter, the rapeseed oil, they're good. Last thing with this is mashed potato. Steam your potatoes, we use roosters, pass them through a potato ricer, add in a little bit of milk and some butter into that. Fantastic, it's ready to serve. First thing we're gonna do is get our mash. So a nice big spoon of the mash to the side. So I'm just gonna bring over the pot here. Be careful, it is hot. I'm serving about two thighs, I think is absolutely fine for this. In the bowl, get as much sauce as possible. I love the way the little button mushrooms have kept their shape and the shallots too. Traditionally in France, when they serve this, they would do lovely little croutons. They'd cut out love hearts of bread and dip them in some chopped parsley. Plenty of the sauce. And I suppose the idea behind this is that the potato will mop up the sauce, or you can serve it with some nice crusty bread. Get your green beans, just a couple to the side. Garnish it with a couple of sprigs of flat leaf parsley. Adds lovely freshness to it. And how quick is that? That's my speedy cock of van Irish style. The Board Bia Quality Mark, ensuring your food is produced to the highest standards of traceability and care for the environment.